This is a little skill drill exercise that I call Colorful Cloud. We're gonna be actually painting a pretty cool looking cloud in Procreate Dreams. And we'll be animating it across the screen. So let's open a new project from the theater. And I like 4K wide on this one. You're, you can scroll through here to get your options for your aspect ratio. 4K wide is nice because we need to make a big sky and have a place for our cloud to travel. I'm going to open this as an empty project, uh, going into the empty timeline and stage rather than the draw. So clicking on empty. And as soon as I'm in, I have my stage. I have my backstage, which is anything that's going to be not visible when you export your movie, but it's still there. So that's going to be our cloud. Our cloud will come in and leave, you know, exit stage left, right, whatever. And our timeline down here, currently we don't have any tracks. We need to have a track or two. So I'm gonna put at least one track in. All across this little project, we're going to be changing that background color. However, I forgot about one thing. Before we do that, let's tap on the title of our file. And we're looking at the duration and the frames per second. We do not really need 30 seconds here. We're gonna have this move along a little more quickly. Maybe it's a really windy day. 20 seconds is fine for our duration, okay? Frames per second is also, 24 is a little excessive. We're just doing a very simple. You could do 12 or 15. I'm gonna choose 15 because it might be just a bit smoother. So, and my duration didn't switch, 20. There we go. So I have 15 frames per second in my settings and a duration of 20 seconds, done. Now you can see my timeline is a little shorter than it had been. Got zero to 20 seconds here. Clicking on the time code. Now this is gonna bring up options here where you can work with your onion skins. That's really important but it also helps you set the background color. And I wanna make a sky color, so I'm gonna go with kind of a very pale, kind of barely there, but sort of pretty light sky, just like that, kind of a light, light blue. You can actually do some really nice work right within Procreate Dreams. And there are some pros and cons to that, so we'll kind of go over those. Let's click on the, we have a new track, just double checking that you at least have a new track to work in. And we're gonna click on the draw mode. In order to get the timeline out of my way, because I sure don't need that yet, I'm just gonna pull this flip this bar down for the flip book. And now I can see, when we do start animating, flip book is helpful for your frame by frame. But what it's helpful for right now is we're actually creating our object that we're going to animate. If you use Procreate, you're familiar with the whole brush library. And if you use Procreate, you may or may not have noticed that in Dreams, we have all the basic tools that ship with Procreate, but we can't go in, can't go into any, any brush like you would in Procreate and edit the settings. So that's restrictive. What you can do is go out to Procreate create a brush set or edit a brush and you can import them and you can buy all kinds of brush sets to and import them. But what we have to work with in Procreate Dreams is what we have. One thing that I have noticed is you can still choose the size. So you have your size and your opacity over here, your brush opacity, we're gonna go full strength and your brush size, 1%, 2, 5, 10, 20. Now this is something you can kind of mess with those settings and procreate the illustrating program. In Dreams, you can't. So if I, if I crank this brush up to 100%, it's nice and big. And this is really important because Procreate Dreams has created a size that is 1 million by 1 million pixels. <laughs> that is way bigger than what the current Procreate software is. So sometimes you might buy some brushes and you might import them into Procreate. And even when you've set your brush to be really large, I'm sorry, when you bring into Procreate Dreams, even when you think you're using a large brush, 
those brushes might end up looking like something really small. But let's focus on the positive and what we can actually achieve in Procreate Dreams, because there's a lot. These are still good brushes. They're named the same. Um, you should be very familiar with a lot of these from Procreate. Let's go to the painting category. And we're gonna use a paintbrush right now that's called Nico Rawl. It's just kind of a, a rough brush. We're gonna set up a couple of colors in this palette. Basically, we're gonna be using kind of a peachy tone, kind of a light peach. If, I, if you're interested in the hex value of what I just chose, and it doesn't have to be exact, but the hex I have is DE9B3F. And so there's my kind of peachy color, okay? And we're just gonna start with that as a base right now. And I'm gonna create a little cloud shape. And this is like really rough, almost childlike. It's gonna be a little, a little bit fluffy on the top, but kind of straighter, a little, a little more flat, give it a little bit of a shelf on the bottom. And I'm not coloring this in super fully. I'm letting it just be a little messy like that. And that's gonna be just my base. You can kind of give it whatever little shapes you want here. Clouds can be anything. I've been looking at the sky a lot lately. Sometimes you look at the clouds and they don't, they just seem like unrealistic, <laughs> but they're real. Now, this is our base. And what we're gonna do is bring in actually pinks and yellows. We're gonna kind of choose a light pink from, I like to go out to Classic is my favorite picker, but you can use whatever picker you like to choose. This is sort of like a cotton candy, a little bit light. Um, again, for my hex, if you're interested, I, that's an F29DDF. F29DDF. It's just a very light pink. And this is going to be something, again, still using the same brush, Nico Rall. I'm just laying this in on the bottom. And again, I'm using kind of a straight stroke. And everything I'm doing right now is um, full opacity for now. I am using the pressure of my Apple Pencil to just be a little gentle. Just kind of ease this pink in from the bottom. And now, third color. This is our third and final color choice. I'm just going to go back out to my classic picker. And it's going to be... Actually, I'm not even changing where my, my picker was. I just changed the hue to a yellow. So it's kind of like this little baby chick yellow. The value of this one for hex would be F2E59D. But again, just really a light baby duck yellow. And now I'm kind of, I'm using a different stroke, you know, a little more circular up here. I haven't changed my brush size. I haven't changed my opacity. I'm just kind of going easy on my uh, pressure as I paint. I'm letting some of the lights shine through like some of that blue background be a little bit translucent there it's gonna it's all gonna get a little blended in soon you'll see if i now i'm gonna go a little heavier so i'm gonna bring my brush size down just a little and i'm gonna really focus on really kind of getting like a, a lining on this cloud up there a little bit of extra yellow Crazy. Okay. So we've got the beginnings of kind of an interesting, you know, not just not just white, an interesting maybe sunset happening going on. So our next paintbrush, this is a two brush project. Next paintbrush we're gonna use is called oil paint. I click on the oil paint brush. I'm gonna actually keep my opacity, like basically my brush pressure limited here. So about 70% and you can kind of decide what you like for your brush size. I'm going, I'm going to start with 15%. I want to be sort of controlled and everywhere that I have rounded strokes, I'm just going back in here and rounding them again and seeing how the, the brush interacts with the colors. So I like how it, it blends. It's a little bit different than blending with a, the finger smudge tool. It kind of, if you were working, it, this is the same, um, if you do this in Procreate, the, the draw program, it would do this 
kind of blending even if these colors were on separate layers, which is kind of cool. So it's different than how your finger smudge tool works. Um, I'm gonna go just slightly bigger with my brush because I want some kind of fluffier movements up here. And it's letting things get wispy on these, these edges, which is kind of nice. When I do work on the bottom part, I wanna go in that same direction that I started in with a little bit of a kind of a horizontal stroke side to side. And so I'm just gonna do this until I get a little bit of a blend, but not too muddy. If, if you over blend, then it just kind of loses some of the, the drama that we're gonna see in this. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. So just kind of adjust your, your brush settings as you go, see what feels right. Get the kind of, see I, I like this nice wispiness now around the edge. But I, I do wanna be careful to not go over things too many times because then it just gets too muddy. Is going to be one more application of actual color now and remember we actually are coloring now we're still coloring with that yellow so if I feel like I want to bring in a little bit more of the peach or a little bit more of the pink which I don't right now but if I if I did I would change that color so we even though it's blending it is putting in yellow primarily Little bit of roundedness down at the bottom, a little more circular up top. And now I do feel like I want to bring some of that peach tone back, I guess just a little bit of the peach tone, so I can go back here in my history. And there's my peach that I just used. I can kind of just bring that back in a little. And if that's too strong, just kick it back, kick the opacity down. All right, I'm almost there. Have a look at your clouds, see if you kind of like what you see. And then we're gonna get this little cloud chugging across the sky. When you're happy with your cloud, you can just flick the flip book down, and now we have our stage, right? We're gonna click on this one frame. Doing too much. Let's try again. There it is. Click hold, and I have all these options now. Fill duration. That's the third from the bottom. I want this cloud to be here for the whole show, right? So fill duration, and now we have this filling all 20 seconds of our production. So we are about to animate our cloud and we're gonna actually do it two different ways. In one, we'll set two keyframes manually and in another method, we'll use performance mode. The first one we're doing is the keyframe method. And so this is a very simple two keyframe kind of production. And I've put my playhead all the way to the very beginning of the timeline, which is important. I'm gonna click on this to bring up this little menu for action, we're ready to do something. I'm gonna choose move and scale. And the first thing I'm doing is scaling this because my cloud's a little bigger than I want it, so I'll take it down. But the next thing I'll do is I will move it. I'm, I'm gonna position it almost all the way off the stage. So it's kind of, it's there, peeking in. And that is our first keyframe. When we've set a keyframe and we've kind of given it coordinates and instructions to be small, to be over to the left, it turned into this keyframe icon. It doesn't look like the director's playhead, the little clapboard anymore. Watch this gesture. I've put a playhead right here, and as I move it, it switches to keyframe. And I can flick, and it goes back to just being a playhead. Flick it again. It, there's a little bit of a delicate touch there, 
but if you flick it just right, it's turned back into a keyframe setting. And if I want it to just be the playhead, it's just a little kind of a tap. So maybe play around with that for a minute until you get the hang of that. What we do want here is to set another keyframe. So if I hold this down, I can use the move and scale here or flick it and now it's already in keyframe mode and just drag my cloud over to there. So let's pinch quickly. We can see the entire timeline. I do have a keyframe in place at the end and I have one in place at the very beginning. So if I hit play, when my whole timeline is showing, we'll see the whole animation take place. Now notice, did you notice how slowly my cloud began? And watch as it comes to its landing point, it's slowing down again. That is due to easing in and easing out. That's what we call that, and sometimes you want that. In the case of a cloud, it's a little weird. We want our, our cloud, sometimes you want an animation to not start off slow, do its thing, and then taper off. It's kind of like, think about music fading in and fading out. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you do not want that. In this case, I do not want ease in and ease out, and that's what it is doing. So what I'm gonna do is, here, pause my timeline, pause my movie, I'll click anywhere there's not a keyframe. And I have a menu here that says set all easings. That means anything I have that has keyframes in it, I want them all to be linear. And let's watch how that plays back now. It's gonna be a little different. Go to the beginning of the animation and there it goes. It's going to maintain that same speed, that same kind of velocity through the whole animation. It's not gonna be a little slow on each end. I'm going to click on that bar again and a little long click. I'm going to delete all the move and scale. That means everything we set for keyframes, <laughs> all two of them, they're gone. So now our cloud just sits there until we tell it to do something else. Let's use performance mode. Instead of manually plotting keyframes, performance mode is one of the things that makes dreams completely different. So performance mode is, is this little record button here, the circle. Once you hit that, you're live, you're ready to be recording. And something I'll just point out before I begin any actions is I have an ability here to modify. Well, modify what? Motion filtering. What you're modifying here isn't really a timeline or object thing. What you're modifying is how your Apple Pencil is um, stabilized or filtered as you make these actions. So think of it like if you're painting with a brush and you have settings in your brush where you can stabilize it. Um, it's sort of like that. If you have it set very low, you might get a kind of a choppy movement. And if you set it a little higher, it might be a little more smoothed out kind of like blended for you. So I usually keep mine above 75%, somewhere in there. And that that setting is something that I believe stays until you change it, even across different files, different projects. So also, I'm gonna click done. If I am not in performance mode, that option isn't there. There is no menu for that until you've hit that record button and then you can adjust that setting. So here we are. I've got a little blinking button over here. It says ready, ready to record. And it's gonna sit there and wait for me until I actually make a motion. And I'm going to take my cloud and I'm gonna move it up, down. It's kind of drifting, kind of drifting. And it's recording exactly in real time. All of those ups and downs that I just did, 
a lot more of a complex movement than just dragging it point to point, right? And if we really zoom in here to look at the timeline, you can see I've got keyframes going all over the place. And just to be safe, I'm gonna click on this bar, set all my easings. I do want them linear. I don't want them doing any weird easing. And we'll watch our animation. Play. From here, we're going to export our movie. We do this by clicking on the name of the movie, which in this case was Dream One, clicking on Share, and we're gonna export this as a video. I just choose Save Video, so it just sort of saves to my my photos my like my camera roll on my ipad i have to uh, give it permission to do that and that's where it will be so i can then email it or upload it from my camera roll <laughs> 